Lord, we pray that you draw us closer to yourself. As we visualize you on the cross, passing through all these pains because of us, may our lives never remain the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the living God. The second word of Jesus on the cross. Verily I say unto thee today, shall thou be with me in paradise. What led to this statement of Jesus? There were two criminals crucified with Christ. They agreed that they deserved what they were passing through. One of them, he had the last opportunity. Both of them, they had the last opportunity in life. I hear that when they want to execute criminals, sometimes they will ask them to say their last word or their last prayer. These two persons decided to use their last opportunity to do something. One of them, he was accustomed to evil. He was used to evil, used to doing evil. And he decided to use his last chance in life to make a record, but a very bad one. The other one, who also was as bad as that one, decided to make a record too. He created a record, but a good record. Jesus just begged God that, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they don't know. It was a time of Jesus to also show the forgiveness that he just begged others. You know, sometimes when we find ourselves in problems, we don't like applying the advice. We have pieces of advice we have given to people to ourselves. We are always very perfect. In most cases, when we want to talk to other people to forgive, but when it comes to our turn, we find it difficult to forgive others. Jesus just begged God, Father, forgive. He was also using his last opportunity on earth. Jesus used that opportunity to create a record that even in that pain, he was passing through, he could still forgive. Instead of being drawn away and being uh, smeared in, in anger, Jesus was still, he, he was able to gather himself together and dish out forgiveness instead of answering the man who just insulted him. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto thee, Today you shall be with me in where? In paradise. What are we using our time for? Are we conscious of our time? Some years back, I met a man. He was over 80 years old. It took me time to summon courage to meet him. So I met him. I said, Baba, this is what God revealed to me. God told me that though you have been in church, every day you attend church, he does not know you. The Baba looked at me and laughed. He was laughing at me. And he said, how can God say he does not know me? The God I pray to when I don't have money, I say, God, give me money. The next minute, you will use somebody to bless me. Are you telling me that God does not know me? About a year or two years later, the man died. This is how people live. Even on deathbed, on the deathbed, people could still call their children and tell them, you see that family? You must make sure you deal with them. You see this person? You must not marry from this family. The father, the great-great-grandfather, this was so thing to my great-great-grandfather. And instead of passing out good things, even on the deathbed, people still use their last chance to do evil. I was told of a young man, a story of a young man who was to die. 
And then they said, the only son of the woman. She, he said, call my mother as I was told. Let me whisper something into her ear. And when the mother came around, he said, please shift closer. I don't want anybody to hear. And then he did what? He beat the ear of this woman and spat it on the ground. He said, you never corrected me. When I was going into the world, he said, it's my only son, it's my only son. You were pampering me like pamper. Today, I am on the death gallop. It's a lesson to some people, but it's a very bad lesson. Why not use that opportunity to forgive the mother who has her own life to live? This man made a very good use of his opportunity. Jesus, in fact, when you look at Christianity, the principles of the Bible, God deals with us on daily basis. Daily basis. If somebody commits sin today and the person confesses, God quickly forgives and does not remember the sins of yesterday. God only remembers when we continue in the sins and we keep a continual memorial before God. Memorial of our evil deeds. But once we repent, God forgives and he does not count wrong any longer. A lot of Christians go to hell. We meet with Boko Haram every now and then. Fulani, terror, Hesman terrorists, they kill people every now and then. Some of the Christians, they go to hell because they had, instead of using the opportunity to confess and repent, even at that time, they will be picking offense. Our president is there. They are killing us now. Oh, what? If I meet with the president, this is what I will do. If I meet with the IG, this is what I will do. Why? You are a Christian. Why not make use of the blood of Christ immediately and be cleansed? We have to be wise. A lot of people die and go to hell because of a confessed sin. This man was never baptized. But when Jesus saw the repentance in him, Jesus drew his own conclusion that if this man have the opportunity to be baptized, he would have been baptized. And because you confess and can still rebuke so, a hardened criminal, rebuking your colleague, the colleague used to eat together, smoke India hemp together, kill together, have blood covenant together that if they catch you, you will not confess me, as courtes and all courts do. If you can still renounce those covenants, that evil friendship, and rebuke him today, you will be with me where? In paradise. Man, born of woman, is wicked in heart. I know that. And our flesh, okay, let me not say our. My flesh is very stubborn. I don't know about your own. Your own may be very obedient. Anytime you want yourself to sit, you sit, stand up, you stand, you draw your New Year resolution, you follow everything. 200%, even more than 100%. Me, it's not like that with me. Oh. A lot of time, I messed up. A lot of time, I offend God. But there is one thing I always like to do. Anytime I know I have offended God, I make sure the next second does not clock. I have to go to God and seek for forgiveness. Do we live like that? Anything can happen. Somebody can be crossing the road and a vehicle will come and the person is gone. And maybe because of quarrel, a man got angry and went outside. A man of God. And as he was going out, he started crying and returned home. When he got home, he apologized to the wife and they settled. And another occult confessed. I have the record. He said he was the one remoting the wife against the man. And as the man was going, they already prepared a tanker, a trailer that would kill the man of God. But the Spirit of God ministered to the man, and the man wept and returned home, and the tanker failed. There were powers of darkness around. Do we confess every time? Let us do our best. We have very little time. Let us confess every time and repent. Everybody will confess in hell. Let us confess freely now. In hell, we will confess we have no reward. But here, when we confess and 
repent, we have our reward, which is being in paradise with Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will help us to finish this race well. May we not join those who crucify you daily because of their evil doings, but help us to keep repenting till we leave this world and rest eternally in your bosom. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.